Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help tell the story of the 20th century and often puts current events in historical context. In 1914, while development of military aircraft plodded along slowly, World War I engulfed Europe. America had no combat planes ready. Congress quickly appropriated funds and our only real aircraft factory sprang into action with hand tools and more muscle than machines. Perhaps our greatest aeronautical contribution to World War I was the Liberty engine. This American-made engine powered many Allied aircraft. American pilots served with distinction and honor, fighting first in Allied planes and with foreign air services. In May 1918, amid wild celebration, the first American-built planes arrived in France, a British DH-4 design with our Liberty engine. That fall, Allied aircraft smashed supplies and communications behind the enemy lines on the Meuse Argonne front. Five weeks later, the armistice was signed. Johnny came marching home. And after speeches and grateful greetings, doughboys returned to the farms, the shops, and the offices. But not the pilots who survived the great adventure of the wild blue young, with firm faith in the future importance of aviation. Using cast-off crates and obsolete equipment, many demonstrated their skills at state fairs and to any large gathering they could find. Public interest and support were stimulated by exploits such as this military flight all the way around the world in just 15 days. And Lieutenant McReady and Sergeant Langham flew to a record high altitude flight with a turbo supercharger. They learned that the air temperature at 39,000 feet is 55 degrees below zero. Too cold for man to survive long without special equipment. Another dedicated pioneer, Lieutenant James Doolittle, proved that man could fly day or night, guided only by instruments. He took off, traveled 15 miles, returned to his starting point, and then landed safely without ever seeing the ground. Lieutenant General James Doolittle, holder of the Medal of Honor. It has been my good fortune to be closely associated with aviation since World War I. In the past five decades, the airplane has become an important means of commercial transportation and a decisive weapon of war. The stick and wire airplanes of yesteryear were simple contraptions. For control, there was a stick, a rudder, a throttle, and a few simple instruments. Then came the retractable landing gear, controllable pitch propellers, flaps, sluts, sophisticated instruments for the engines, for flight control, and for navigation. The old piston engine was replaced by the modern gas turbine. The increase in the number and complexity of aircraft, together with greater safety and reliability requirements, brought more rules and regulations and the necessity for widespread aids to navigation and instrument landing equipment. The airplane became faster, safer, and more reliable. Air transportation helped our economy and air power assured our national security. Thank you, General Doolittle. 